Hi, I'm MPI, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady is use the power of engineering to help you, yes, you, find the new product introductions. There's something very new, very cool from Arduino. Yay! Our old job, well, I guess we should say back when Arduino um, had a dispute with the trademark, there were two separate companies for a bit. We said, let's help the, the good guys, the USA team. Um, and we helped out the, uh, the Arduino team. We and manufactured, we yeah. were manufacturing and Mossimo and the entire team came back together. They're now whole. And the, uh, the, per the person who kind of like took over Arduino got fired, pushed out, whatever you want to call it. And now Arduino is doing all the things that they should be doing, like make the hardware. That's right. So like this new hardware. There's new hardware. And it's open source, by the way. Yay, it's open source. So this is the new RA4 nano board from um, Arduino, which I really like. They are taking that, sorry, the R4. It's the RA4 chip. It's called the R4. Uh, nano, um, and, you know, a new addition in their line of nanos. You know, it's interesting. I looked up, this was product number five. You know, Ooh. like they really, this was a very, very early product that they made. Um, I think it, they made it around the Dwemula Nove time, I think, and then it got revised after the Uno. Unbelievably popular microcontroller board. This was in everything because basically you'd have your Arduino Classic, your Dwemula Nove, or um, DHA Mila, or your, you know, Uno, or you know, whatever other classic Arduino. But then if you wanted to use it on a breadboard or in a smaller project, um, you'd go with the Nano, which had pretty much all the pins exposed, a little programming header, USB built in, and it was just really compact and really easy to use. So not surprisingly, over the years, Arduino has revised, um, you know, used the same pinout and set up, except now, you know, maybe it's micro USB, maybe it's USB-C. Um, they did one with the ESP32. They did one with the RP2040. They did one like they did one with the SAMD21. They've done a lot of different variants of this board. Um, but what I really like is this is the first one that's 5 volt compatible and um, has a Cortex M4, which is pretty cool. So we covered the R4 minima and Wi Fi boards two years ago, almost the day. Um, it's mm. time flies, huh? Um, and those boards. Um, featured the new Renaissance RA4 series chips, Cortex M4 processor with um, uh, 256 megabytes of flash, 32K of RAM, but also had some other really cool things in it like a DAC, really good ADCs. I think the ADCs is like 12-bit, the DAC is 12-bit, built-in CAN, and again, uh, five volt compatibility, which is um, logic level, which is really, really rare in a Cortex M4, especially one that has native USB as well. Um, in fact, I think this is the only chip I've ever seen that has native wow. USB and a DAC, ADC, blah, 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 Cortex M4 ARM standard and five volt IO, not just five volt compliant, but actually uses five volt level. Mm. And so it's, a, it's an excellent chip as an upgrade because so many people are expecting that five volt logic level on you know, their old at mega, series Unos and Nanos, this makes it a much better drop-in. Um, another thing that's really nice about this, because some people are like, well, why not just use the you know 2040 or the ESP32 version of the Nano? Like, those are all good. You know, you should check out all the Nano series, but this one I like particularly because there's a lot of ADCs, which the RP2040 does not have. It has some kind of a limited number of ADCs, like I think three or four are available. It's got that built-in CAN, it's got a DAC, and the ADCs are linear. And I think one of the things that's really powerful about the Arduino platform is it's really good for interfacing with sensors, which means a lot of analog inputs. And I, these are going to be better analog input. You're going to have a better experience with the analog inputs than with the ESP32, which is kind of nonlinear, or the RB2040, which is limited. Um, so this is kind of like the best drop-in replacement. Another thing that's really nice, if you look at the bottom there, they added dun, 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 a quick connector. Yeah. Um, I think this is the first nano that does this but it's definitely new they added it on the uno ra4 i love it i love that this, asking, the spark fun standard has become a standard standard it's really, yeah they did Go really good Go and, and like we adopted it i'm like they get a great job they put level shifting on this so it's three volt compatible so it'll work with you know any any boards basically um ones that have level shifting in that okay uh anyways uh let's check out the, the pinout um Nothing it has is EEPROM, which is really cool because, again, um, not every Cortex chip has EEPROM. 
uh, DMA lots of, sorry, 14 bit ADC, which is really nice. Again, most ADCs max out at 12 bit, 12 bit DAC also really nice. Some are only 10, um, the built in op amp stuff and the built in Canva. So really nice all around chip. Um, the schematics, uh, you know, I just, I just grabbed some images. You can see what pins are available and used. Um, it's the same chip used on the Uno, but like, you know, they didn't expose every single IO. They have a lot of extra ADC, so you can see there's some that are like used to like measure the uh, five volt logic level. Okay. They have a really nice power supply, um, which is uh, which has a buck converter to get five volts out of VN. I think this has seven to sixteen volt input, uh, which is really nice. And then they have a separate three point three volt regulator that's just for the uh, quick I squared C connector, which is which is good. It's like that way you can, you know, you're not supposed to hot swap connect I squared C, but you know, if you make it possible, everyone does. And so, um, you know, I like that they have a separate regulator. Um, so you don't, uh, you know, you don't risk, um, brown outing your, uh, main five volt supply. And then this is the power tree sort of showing the, the, the connection of the power supplies for, um, everything on this microcontroller. Uh, and it comes from USB-C for power, which is nice. And then, uh, as mentioned, they have this I squared C connector with the JST SH and proper logic level shifting with pull ups on both sides. So you can have, and this is a separate I squared C than the pinout. So there's actually two I squared C buses, one for this connector and one for the main pin. So you actually get two buses in case you have like address conflicts, which is kind of sweet. Um, and it's open source hardware, which is great because it means that if you want to take this design, integrate it into your product, or you want to revise it, you want to change stuff around the files are published. I downloaded them, verified them. Um, so you can do that. Comes in two versions. I showed a picture of the version with header. It also comes in a castellated flat bottom version that does not have any components on the bottom. And so you can actually like pick and place it down on the PCB and make it like a ready to go, like, you know, board that is just, uh, you know, soldered right in place, flat on your design, um, which is kind of a, a popular thing people like to do these days. So check it out. It's in stock. Both versions are in stock right now at DigiKey. They are a genuine supplier. You can get real Arduino boards with real Arduino support and software um, and manufacturing. So I, you know, I think this is a really nice upgrade. I love that there is a high quality five volt version of the Nano available. That's a you know really big flash and memory upgrade from the original at Mega 328. All right, here's a one minute video, and then we'll see you on the other side.